Good morning. And uh, good morning. And it's um, we we trust sometimes that everything is working because we can't um, always. Um, uh, we, if we try to have a monitor on while we're doing this, then it, we get feedback. So uh, um, we're just trusting it's all going on out there, and you can uh, see us and, and hear us and everything. And, and um, just uh, pray, praying that um, we can get back to, uh, now that we're getting things each, each time, each time we do this a little bit more together, um, Nancy has some new things she's worked very many hours on trying to, to get uh, so that we can do some slides while we're while we're preaching and so forth so um, just uh, uh, praying that that'll all work and um, but we're gonna add, get it all ready just in time for us to go back to to uh, being able to meet uh, together uh, in the church but um, and just a, a little bit of thought on that is that um, um, since now uh, our state has given permission for um, gatherings of 10 and under uh, we are considering uh, beginning uh, we're trying to work towards being able to uh, begin that next week and uh, we'll uh, reduce the number of chairs in there in, in the building and uh, um, we will uh, whoever can come can come and who can't come will still have it uh, aired uh, as we are now and you can still watch it on, on YouTube and be a part that way so whether you can be with us in person or still be with us uh, in um, well, actually it's still in person but it's uh, electronically in person okay uh, but we are still uh, can be together and worship together and uh, and praise God and learn from his word. So uh, uh, it's good to have you uh, together. And our first song is uh, There is Power in the Blood. But as far as next week, uh, if there's, uh, we will let you, know, you all know as to what we're doing, but um, we will still be broadcasting it the same. Um, and that that's not going to change. Um, and so ho ho prayerfully, uh, we also have a new uh uh, camera coming and and um, uh, and so that uh, we're going to be experimenting with that a little bit and and see how we can do all of that. But um, uh, it's it's um, it's something that uh, everything is is a, a work in progress and um, but um, God's been good and it's uh, just amazing. Uh, I I believe that amazing what we can do. Uh, if you only saw what I'm looking at at, at the computer screen right now, it look, looks looks like I'm I'm looking at a uh, um, at, at a uh, studio mixer, uh, as well as you know two little monitors that are saying that what, what what we can what we have up there. So anyway, um, first song is "There's Power in the Blood," and. Uh, uh, they have the words, or you have them on the screen. They, have, you have the words. So okay. Um, it, it, yeah, words in chat. So. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you are evil with victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood. 
power in the blood It's in the saints are lost in its life-giving flow There's wonderful power in the blood There's power, power, wonder-working power In the blood of the Lamb There's power, power, wonder-working power In the precious blood of the Lamb would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to ring? Oh, in the blood, there's power, power, wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. And that is a little high for me. So anyway. Uh, Alright. And um, and so um, we have our greeting song. Sorry, a little technical difficulty. I had to stick my head in here. Hello. <laughs> I can't see the glare. The glare on. Okay, we got the words up, and uh, Nancy will supply the music. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless waves, send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel, light, let it shine. From shore to shore, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. And this is where we greet one another and just thank you that you can be with us today. And and uh, we just, like I said, we're looking forward to uh, perhaps being back in our church home next week, and uh, we'll continue to broadcast as well. So. Uh, God is good. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Okay, amen. And uh, we do uh, look to, to sending the light to be a witness and testimony for Jesus Christ in all we do and wherever we go. And uh, you have to slide in here. Oh, hi. <laughs> We've got a cord in the way. And other logistical issues, but it's good to see you all. And I am here in the background, usually. And we're going to do some announcements. Okay, um, announcements. And um, of course, uh, uh, today is the live on church, uh, on online work, you know, worship service, and uh, and and then um, a fellowship. Uh, Zoom, with Zoom is following anyone who wants to stick around for that and uh, I messaged Nancy for the link and then on Monday it's a ladies Bible study and on uh, the book of Ruth and it's on Zoom and uh, Wednesday night it's men's Bible study in First Thessalonians and uh, just an exciting book and uh, uh, we still uh, are looking for others to join with us and uh, it's been a really good uh, uh, time so far in the book of the, uh, First Thessalonians, very much uh, appropriate for this, these times and what we're going through right now. And uh, uh, First Thessalonians really ties in, and uh, it uh, uh, shows us how relevant Scripture is. And uh, that's on Zoom also. Okay, and so all right. Um, our next thing is, our next song is, uh, uh, well, prayer time right now. So uh, 
we'll do prayer time first. And uh, so, um, you know, if you have prayer requests, you can give us over the, um, what is it, FaceTime or what are you using? Messenger. Messenger. Chat. And Messenger chat. And uh, um, uh, and we can uh, then um, um, share things. Um, be in prayer for, you know, uh, just this fact of being able to get back together and, and uh, in our, um, our church home. And that's exciting. And we're looking forward to that. And uh, to actually see uh, some of you face to face. Uh, and um, uh, just pray as we try to get things together uh, set up for, for next week. And uh, so be in prayer for that. Um, other things? Um, do you have any particular yes, prayer requests? Yeah. Ask for prayer for Josette. All right, uh, Josette. She's uh, uh, Olga has pray, uh, asked for prayer for her in the past, and uh, what's the latest? She has. Um, Josette is in Puerto Rico. She's the daughter of a friend of Olga's, and we have prayed for her in the past for her cancer. Um, the update is that she has gone through uh, whatever treatments were recommended for her, um, and she is not doing well right now. The, um, I'm assuming it was chemo or chemo radiation, whatever was, um, of course, toxic to her body, and she's not doing well right now. She is just in her 40s. She's a young woman, um, and uh, Olga, our good friend Olga um, from church, asked that we pray for her and her mother. Uh, her mother's name is Nettie. So it's Heavenly Father, we pray for Josette and her mom, and we pray that you'll watch over them and, and uh, just uh, in these days of difficulty. Just pray that you will cause your, your presence to be upon them and that they will know your presence. And we pray that you'll supply every need. And we do pray for healing, but we trust you for this, and we pray that thy name will be praised and honored and glorified in all things. In Jesus' name. And Ella asked for prayer for her mom. Um, she's waiting for some biopsy results. Lord, we pray for Ella's mom, and we pray as she's waiting, and uh, and that these are some of the hardest times not knowing. We pray that you would just uh, uh, touch her heart, um, work in her to know your presence, to know that you're with her, and to know your comfort. That, and the comfort that only comes from you. We pray that you would supply all needs, and uh, we pray that uh, if it's thy will, that the, 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 the reports will be good, but uh, uh, whatever is thy will, that we entrust uh, Ella's mom into your hands, knowing that you are in charge and you're in control, and you can supply and work all things together for good for those that love you and are the called according to your purpose. Amen. We're praying for Shane's family and Shane. We continue to pray for Shane, his wife, and uh, his uh, mother-in-law, and, and all those in that family. We just pray that you'll watch over them and, and uh, comfort them in their grief and cause them also to know your presence and to know that this loved one is with you. And then uh, we just pray, thank you and praise you that we can have that confidence because of the profession he made. Uh, 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 that he knew you and trusted you. We pray that thy name be praised in all things in Jesus' name. And then uh, Tammy asked for prayers for her brother-in-law, JP, um, in the hospital and very agitated because they, because of the visiting restrictions and all that he's going through. So his name is J JP. We just pray for JP right now with all the the, the things, the physical difficulties, as well as the mental and emotional. And we pray that you'll watch over him, Lord. We pray that he, too, will know you and know your presence, Lord, and, and uh, to uh, be able to, to give this over into your hands. We pray for those around about them and about him that are they're so frustrated because they can't visit. We pray that you'll watch over them, give them joy and peace as well. And we pray that you'll touch J.P., and heal him and strengthen them, that thy name be praised and glorified. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And Tammy asked her prayer that, we, that they can get the work done, that they need to get done on the garage, and that God will protect Dan's back. We do pray for Danny and Tam, uh, uh, Dan and Tammy 
as they as they uh, travel this week, and we pray that you'll watch over them, and we pray for uh, relief from the pain on on Dan's back, and we pray that that they will be able to get done the work they need to on the garage and everything else at the house this coming uh, couple of weeks. We pray that thy name be praised and honored and glorified there as well, uh, in Jesus' name. And then we pray also for um, my, my sister. She needs, she and her husband need to find a land, uh, a tenant. They are landlord. They need to find a tenant uh, for my mom's former apartment. We pray for uh, uh, Ellen and, and Carl as they as they seek uh, there in New Jersey to find a, a tenant for for their uh, for their um, yeah their apartment. And we pray that uh, you would just uh, lead them to the person who's best suited. And uh, we just pray that thy name will be praised and glorified in that. And just pray that they, they will uh, keep their eyes on you, trusting you and looking to you, Lord. And uh, and uh, not go according to man's thinking, but go according to your leading. And we pray that thy name be praised in Jesus' name. And then we want to pray for my cousin Chris, who's in the hospital with COVID. You do pray for Nancy's cousin, Chris, and uh, it, is, it is hard to hear that she has this COVID, and, but we pray that you'll watch over her. We pray you'll touch her as well and, and cause her to, to know your presence, Lord. I, I know that she has, has, has made a profession for Christ uh, in the past, and we pray that uh, you will be real to her now and that she'll have her eyes on you. And we pray for her family, we pray for her son, we pray for some reconciliation there as well, that thy name be praised in Jesus' name. And let's pray for our um, country, our leaders, and um, on Memorial Day, let's remember those who have given their lives for our, for our country. Lord, we do think of those who have given their lives for this country, and we pray that you will uh, just, uh, as we remember them, that we will uh, uh, um, thank you thank you for what you've done and what you've done in this country lord we pray that you uh, just uh, uh continue to be at work and work in our nation and work in our leaders and uh, uh we pray that you will restore us and uh, cause us to not only to be restored um, health wise and not only to be restored uh, economically but most of all to be restored uh, spiritually that we'll turn our eyes on you and trust you we pray for your church, and we pray that you will uh, cause us not to forget the lessons we've learned during this time of difficulty, but that we will uh, continue to be on our knees and, and pray, and, and that we'll continue to look to you and trust you and look to you uh, for a, a great revival within us that will spread throughout our nation. We pray that thy name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, just to all of you, uh, again, this is the time we, we normally have our offering, and uh, uh, Nancy has on the screen there, if anyone wants to send anything in, uh, this is where. Um, it is true that bills keep coming, even though we're not there, uh, but rent still has to be paid, and, and insurance has to be kept up, and all these different things, so... And, uh, and during this time, we haven't missed any of our uh, giving to our pledged mission support, and we're continuing to do that, and uh, that has not uh, uh, been delayed at all. And God has provided, and I, I uh, believe he will continue to do so. I'm just very thankful for God and what he does. And so... Um, that's um, where we're at right now. We have a, a, a song coming up, and um, we're going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy. Song 
shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, Casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee. Who word in art and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sin from man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love and purity. One last verse. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, holy, merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. And there's so much truth in that song, and uh, God is good. And I think Nancy has something more do set up. A video song and, here. Uh, one of Dan's songs, one of our favorites, one of his favorites, actually, I think. And it is a video. Please sing along with us. Um, the words will be on the screen. Hopefully. Hopefully. And here we go. But he made a way, 
price in there to pay is something and love lifted me now I can go on and live in his rest his peace overcomes my soul with my sin all forgive, I am bound for hell. He forgave me and made me whole. For God found a way to reach down to me, to save me from all of my sin. Though he's holy and just, in his mercy I trust, his love came to Calvary Street. Oh, his love came to Calvary Street. rough around the edges today with the, the new screen we're looking at in technology, but um, I'm excited we can do this. And I'm going to be reading the scripture for today, which is Romans 12, verses 3 through 8, and I'm reading from um, the English Standard Version uh, today, from starting with verse 3, Romans 12, verse 3. Right? Yes. For by grace... By the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word, and let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for, for uh, your word, and we thank you for uh, the things that you have for us this morning. And, and we just pray that, that we will look to these things, and you'll touch every heart, uh, and that we will uh, just know more what you have for us. I once again pray that it won't be my words, but your words that are heard, and your message that is heard, and... Uh, Oh, we pray that all things will be done for thy honor and thy glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, uh, so um, looking at this uh, passage uh, that we've read as serving through spiritual gifts. And uh, there's a lot of talk these days about spiritual gifts. And uh, different people will tell you, well, I have the gift of this and I have the gift of that and so forth. And, and, uh, and, uh, and it is true that God gives us spiritual gifts. And so uh, prior to this, he was telling us in this passage in verses 1 and 2 to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Um, and uh, so it reminds us that things are not the same when you become a believer. They're not the same as they were before. All the old has passed away and uh, we have become new and our old nature uh, has been crucified on the cross with Christ. And Paul tells us that even though it has, apparently we still practice 
uh, because within our bodies, we still have the memories and still have uh, all of the, uh, the habits that have been there and continue, and we uh, very easily still follow the old man. And so he says, put off the old man and put on the new. And so it is a constant uh, uh, battle in one sense, a, a constant uh, uh, transformation. And so that's why Paul tells us, keep on being transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so we are instructed to do that. And then Paul goes right away into this idea of serving through spiritual gifts. He says you have spiritual gifts. You have things that God has given you to equip you for service. And that is clear from the context of this passage. And so God gives us the gifts. And um, uh, he, 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 we have to realize that the Christian life is all from God. Uh, I was reading this morning uh, a, a preacher who was uh, uh, giving it this way. It says that one cannot come to Christ uh, except that Christ, uh, obviously, uh, God has to draw him. And God must uh, be working in him uh, and, and uh, be giving him the, um, the gift of repentance. If God doesn't put that within someone's heart, they cannot be saved. And that's why we pray. And we pray for those around about us. God, you know, place upon their heart that gift of repentance. That they will come to you and know you and trust you. And so God gives us that gift. And he gives us uh, other gifts for service. So he gives us that gift for salvation. And he gives us other gifts for service. And so um, God gives us these gifts uh, to serve him. And um, so Paul gives us some guidance concerning these things. And he says, first of all, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. And uh, he, he, uh, Proverbs 29, 23 tells us, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. And so we have a warning against pride. And uh, that's the... Uh, the whole of, um, you know, Scripture tells us that basically the original sin is pride. What is pride? All right? Pride is putting ourselves, setting ourselves up as the authority of all things instead of looking to God as our Lord and our Master and the, our authority in all things. And so um, don't think of yourself more highly than of others. Don't say, because I have this gift... You know, don't lord it over other people. Don't don't say that this gift is, or even think that this one gift is better than an, than another. It is God who gives the gifts, and we need to realize that. And He gives us the gifts for a purpose, and that is to serve. And you, I've already said that about three or four times, and I will continue to say that throughout this section because Paul says it. The pur the purpose of the gifts are to serve, and not uh, to bring glory to myself or anything of the sort. You know, some people have gifts uh, of music, and there's people who serve to God through that gift of music. There are other people who have the gift of music, and they use it to glorify themselves. And uh, uh, and only God can, can really sometimes uh, tell the difference. And so the idea is that we need to realize that our gifts are for a purpose, and that is to serve and serve our Heavenly Father, and serve his, the body of Christ. And so he says, first of all, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think to every man that is among you, to, uh, because, uh, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So he's saying, as God has given you your gifts, think soberly. And that word sober is very interesting because it means be in a right mind. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it, we use it in in terms of not being drunk, okay, uh, whether with uh, drugs or alcohol or anything of the sort. 
but um, uh, but actually it means to be in a right mind and to uh, uh, and on, on contrast with that is to have pride is to not to be in a right mind and uh, and to, in a sense it's a form of insanity if you look at it from the idea of scripture and so he says instead of having pride think soberly and uh, and think in a right mind and uh, um, and Titus 1 8 uses that word he says be a lover of hospitality a lover of good men sober in other words be in a right mind uh, just holy and temperate think rightly and so then God goes uh, I mean, Paul goes on and he says here that God is the one that gives us the gifts through faith it's very interesting it uses it says that he dealt to every man the measure of faith and when I think of a measure he's talking about the measure meaning a measurement uh, um, utensil in other words uh, when I make my my famous or infamous uh, bread, uh, I take a, uh, a a scoop and uh, a measuring cup, and I measure out so much flour and so much of this and so much of that, and uh, that is my measure. And so God uses the the measure of faith. He uses faith to dispense the gifts, and uh, and He gives us the gifts. And so he gives us the gifts according to his own choosing. It's very interesting that, uh, once again, that is why we are told not to be prideful of them and so forth, because God gives uh, different ones of us different gifts. And, uh, and uh, God is the one who does the giving. And, uh, and so um, uh, we need to look to God for it and... Uh, and not be jealous that, oh, all right, all right, so-and-so, they have the gift of, and we can name whatever it is, and uh, they have this gift, and I don't have that gift, and so forth. And, uh, um, and, and, and we can pray that God will give us gifts, but some people will pray for particular gifts, and uh, sometimes God has put upon their heart to pray for that gift, and God has put you on your heart to pray for a certain gift, do that, but also always remember it is God who does the giving. And so we need to trust God and give that into his hands, that he will give us the gifts that we need, uh, that he has for us to have. And then he goes on, then he goes on and says that there are many members in the one body, and we are all members, and we have not the same office or same function. And uh, actually, elsewhere in 1 Corinthians, he talks about that in, in more depth. But 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, As the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are, are one body, also, so also is Christ. And so he's uh, comparing us to a human body, in a sense, and he says, he goes on in, in uh, 1 Corinthians there, he goes on and he talks about uh, how can the foot say to the hand, that, well, I'm more important than you are, and the, and then the hand say to the eye, uh, I'm more important than you are, and so forth. And the point is, is that we, we are all needed in the body of Christ, even though we have different functions. And I can't say... To someone else to say you're not as important as I am because it's just not true and, uh, and and conversely with this when one member suffers all suffer and when one member is failing to do as God has called them to do all members suffer and so unfortunately there are absentees in the body of Christ and the whole body suffers because of that. And so unless someone says, uh, you know, the, the tendency of someone saying, well, yeah, but if I, if I don't, you know, do and I don't get active and I don't do right with the Lord and all that, I'm only hurting myself. And that's not true. Um, and so we have responsibility to one another. is what Paul is trying to, to tell us here. 
And then the next thing we see is that he, he says we have different gifts to serve one another. First Peter 4.10 says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so we are told that we have the different gifts and the purpose is to serve one another. And, um, you know, when someone says, well, well, look at what I can do, you know, well, then you watch out for that person because uh, they'll be prideful and other things as well. And so then what happens is Paul goes on and gives us a list here of some of the gifts. And Nancy read them and they're a little bit different, going to be sounding a little bit different than in uh, the King James, but, the, uh, but what she read is very, very close, um, using many of the same words. And so uh, I want to go through them, but I, but I want to I wanna, uh, say something before I go through some of these gifts. And uh, because I'm not going to do an exhaustive teaching on them other than saying that we have the gifts. And a lot of times uh, people will, will say, well, what gifts do I have? How do I know what gift God has given me? Okay. And, uh, uh, and I want to I want to just preface it with something. Remember that these are gifts for service. And if you're not actively seeking to serve the body of Christ, then I would say this, you are not going to know your gift. There was a number of years ago, and probably still is, is uh, being published and circulated about, a, an inventory that some uh, uh, Bible teachers came up with uh, that you could take and then you could send it in and, then pro and they would process it for you. And they would uh, tell you what gifts God has given you. And you say, well, well you know, it, it, it sounds a little bit more far-fetched now than, uh, than when you actually have one of these things. But this was very popular. And there were many people in, in uh, Christian churches, in good, Christ, solid Christian churches, that were taking the spiritual gifts inventory and coming out with it and saying, well, I have the gift of teaching. Or I have the, touch, uh, the, the gift of and, and naming something else and naming these different gifts. And uh, I, I, to this day, I actually feel that I have a, I have a problem with that because, uh, first of all, gifts are not a static thing. Gifts are not to be confused with natural abilities that God gives us. We all have natural abilities just with, with the fact that we've been created by God and we all have different abilities. Some people have the gift of speaking. Some people uh, stammer. and Some people don't uh, speak as clearly. And I fall into that category. Yet God has given me, I believe, a gift of teaching. And uh, I, I really, the problem is also too, uh, I'm going to, this is a little sidebar here, if you have to tell people what your gift is, perhaps you don't have that gift, you know, because people will see your gift. In fact, you may not even know that you have a gift, but you are practicing it and uh, and doing it, and other people will tell you, well, you have the gift of teaching, or you have the gift of prayer, or you have the gift, which is not listed here, but that is truly a gift, or you have the gift of something else. And, uh, and when you think about it, yes, because that's what you've been doing. And God has given you that gift and you are exercising it even though you don't realize you have that gift. And so gifts are of that nature. They're not a static thing. I think God gives them and they are apart from, and sometimes they go along with, but they are not necessarily what your natural abilities are. Some people uh, uh, feel they don't have natural abilities. I know of one person um, uh, which, uh, when we, when I was the principal of a Christian school in the Philadelphia area, and uh, we needed a teacher for our combined third, fourth uh, grade class, and uh, uh, it was about uh, six six kids who needed a teacher, and uh, basically, uh, you know, half of them were in. I, I think I just said third, fourth, but it was fifth, sixth, 
And uh, uh, half, half the kids were in sixth grade and half of them were in fifth grade. And uh, what you did is, is uh, when the kids were doing their independent reading time, you were teaching, the, 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 when the sixth graders were doing the independent teaching uh, activities, then you were doing, uh, teaching the fifth graders and, and vice versa. And so um, it, 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 uh, we had uh, all of the um, uh, tools on how to do that and everything, but we needed this teacher. And uh, I, uh, uh, I thought of a certain person, and I told her our need, and I did not uh, uh, tell her that, you know, I'm, I'm putting any pressure. I didn't push pressure. I didn't feel I was putting pressure on her to, to do this. And her reaction was that I don't have that gift, you know. And uh, But what happened was is that uh, during the following week, God laid upon her heart a burden for these kids, and she came back to me and said that that uh, that that was what pushed her to the point of saying, "Okay, Lord, I will do it." And God gave her that gift. I can't say she had that gift ahead of time, but I do believe that for that situation, because because. Uh, that, that God gave her that gift, and she still has that gift today, and she's still teaching in in other situations, and and is a very gifted teacher, uh, even though she has not gone through all the teacher training courses that you know they give in a university or college. Uh, she is a natural, uh, we would say a natural, but it, it's something that God gave her that gift, and so. Um, gifts come, and I want to say this, that gifts come from uh, service and, uh, and as we are called to service and as we obey and yield to service. And I believe that that's where God gives us those gifts. We may not have them ahead of time. And they may coincide with some of our natural abilities, but God gives the gifts as we obey and, and uh, yield to him. And yield to him on the opportunities that he has given us. And so we cannot go around and, and use this. You know, that was one of the problems with this inventory of gifts. Uh, written inventory. And people would come back, well, you have the gift of this. You have the gift of that. You don't have the gift of, of whatever. And so then we would have people saying, uh, as they were called upon to, to uh, consider to do things in churches and, and in Christian service, said, "Oh, I can't do that. I don't have that gift." And that is that is a, a wrong way of looking at it. The other thing I want to say about these gifts, as we start to go through some of these now, um, is that uh, you know, there's one of them, the gift, the, the gift of giving. Okay. So we, we can't say, well, I don't have the gift of giving, so therefore I'm not going to give. And that's not the point. Many of these things we are all called to do, and God does give us ability to do many of these things. But when we talk about the spiritual gifts, these are special uh, gifts that God gives uh, for the different things. And I'm not necessarily going to do these in order, but the, uh, the gift of, of giving is, is the ability um, to earn, but it's special pleasure in giving. But even besides that, I mean, God has called us all to be cheerful givers. And he's called us all to give to one another. But there, to me, I look at that gift as a gift of, of having the uh, ability, the special ability to see the needs of others and to uh, and, and to learn how to provide for those needs. There are certain people that have that gift that I don't necessarily have. They see the, the needs of others, and they, and they have learned how to uh, provide for those needs. And often God gives them the ability to give as well. But to me, that's apart from our normal calling of us all to give. And, um, and so that was one of them. Uh, other one is starting at the top of the list there is prophecy. And that's, that's um, 
uh, difficult to explain today because of the fact that many people think of that as uh, foretelling the future. And there are people who will prophesy over other people and say, well, I have a special word from God uh, to you, uh, for you, and so forth. And I've had people come to me on that. And I, I uh, well, one particular uh, case, a uh, you know, person did this, and I'm thinking, well, if God gave you that word, why didn't he give me that word? And uh, that's a good question. And one answer would be, well, you don't have the gift of prophecy. But the point is, is that uh, here, the, the, it means, well, actually, in the Bible, there's two phases of prophecy. In the Old Testament, when they, uh, you had an Old Testament prophet, he had two things. It was one is that uh, was foretelling what God was going to do, and the other was foretelling, telling uh, the word of God, speaking the word of God. And, and teaching the people and instructing the people. And so uh, today, uh, one of the preachers that I looked at and when I was preparing the notes says, it is the sharing insight of the word of God in, in, in particular situations and cases. A pastor needs to have a certain gift of prophecy to be able to share the insight of the word of God to the people uh, in his church. And also, God gives uh, individuals the, in, the gift of being able to see uh, uh, and, to, and be able to uh, give out the word of God to others and explain things in such a way that is affecting their particular situation. So it's explaining. It's a little more than, uh, than um, um, just, uh, it's te not just teaching, but it's bringing edification and comfort in specific circumstances. And uh, I think along with that is, is also the gift of, of soul winning, of going out and winning people for Christ. We are all called to, uh, to witness for Christ and be a witness for Christ. But there are those that God gives that special gift that uh, seems to be there that is, is, uh, can really uh, bring the word in a particular situation and uh, uh, really bring people uh, to the point where they see and need uh, their need for Jesus Christ. And so prophecy, ministry, or serving. And uh, this is a, a, a gift that I, I feel that a lot of people in churches have this special gift. And they, again, once again, they don't realize it because they just do, you know. And we have people, I could name some names of people in our church, and maybe you can too, that are that definitely have this gift. They are serving. They see uh, the needs uh, of the church and of others, and they are there to do them. And I think uh, along with that, uh, ministry is, is a gift of prayer, even though it's not listed separately here, but prayer. It's definitely a ministry. And there are people who have that special uh, gift of prayer. Uh, we often call them prayer warriors. And now we are all called to pray. And so we can't say, well, I can't pray because I don't have that gift. And I'm not talking about praying in public because that's something else again. But I am uh, talking about the idea that we can have this gift uh, there can be that special gift of prayer where people just have an, an overwhelming uh, uh, burden and God brings into their hearts and their minds and, uh, and they pray earnestly for the needs of, of themselves, but especially for the needs of others. And um, uh, I can think of some people over the years that I know, and again, once again, in our church, I believe, have that gift of prayer. They are prayer warriors. When you have a have a need of something, your your mind often goes to that person, and, and you say, "Well, I want that person to know so they can be praying for that." I've had people in my life over the years that um, the one in particular is with the Lord now. She was in a wheelchair uh, most of her adult life, and uh, Nancy's nodding her head because she knows who I mean, and uh, uh, and and she was. It was like if. When, when you knew that something and you had a really a burden on your heart, it would be like, you know, I need to talk to Barbara. 
because I know she's going to hold that up before the Lord. And she was a prayer warrior. And uh, she had that gift of prayer. And, uh, and, and, um, and so that was that. And then the, 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 the gift, the next one is listening to teach, uh, a gift of teaching, the teaching. And teaching is, is the ability to explain and apply the truths of, scr of Scripture, to communicate the truth of God's Word that we have learned from our study. And um, it is a gift of teaching. And, to, uh, and, and sometimes it's, a, it's teaching God's Word. Sometimes it's teaching other things. Um, I know people who are gifted at teaching a variety of subjects. And the one I talked about earlier was teaching God's, uh, the life of Jesus Christ through her teaching of academics in the school. And so um, the, uh, the idea is that God gives us that special teaching. Now, uh, once again, I can say if I'm a parent, I can say, well, I can't really teach my kids because I don't have that gift. Uh, you may not have the special gift, but you are called to teach and you are called to practice it. And and uh, once again, realize that as God has called you to ministry in a particular area, he will give you that gift that you need for that ministry. And it comes first in obedience to God's word. So if I want to know my spiritual gift, I need to get out there and serve the Lord. I need to say, as Isaiah uh, said to God, here I am, Lord, send me. And just think about that. God, uh, Isaiah was, 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 was given uh, uh, the challenge, and he saw a vision, and he was given a challenge, and the, the challenge was, who will go? Who will go and tell my people? And Isaiah says, here I am, Lord, send me. And that's what we need to be, uh, where we need to be. And we need to uh, uh, realize then, that as we do this, God will provide the gifts. And uh, next one uh, we heard was exhorting, exhorting. Uh, the, the, uh, the exhortation is to build people up and uh, uh, is to challenge people and to bring comfort. It's two aspects of it. To challenge people and to bring comfort. And there are those who just have that special gift of that. And some can do that better than others, but God gives us that sensitivity into the, the hearts of others. We are all called to do this function, but some people, God gives that special gift to do. And then the next one was giving, which I already talked about, and ruling. Um, administration in one place it's called it, but it's the ruling, it's, it's the leading, it's to stand before and to lead by example. Um, God calls pastors, and many and pastors need to have some degree of this gift of ruling, you know, because uh, we are to lead, and we are to lead by example, and uh, we're not to lord it over other people. That's the, is the point. Uh, many people want to have that gift of ruling, uh, of ruling, and I've seen people in churches that where churches are torn apart because people are trying to grasp that gift of ruling and they have not been given that gift of ruling. And they don't know how to lead others. And they do it by intimidation or do it by, by, uh, um, by trying to force their will on others instead of allowing God to lead through them. And it is a special gift that we need to rule. Uh, and to direct and to lead, and then showing mercy, and uh, uh, and and uh, so the ability to put yourself in the place of someone in need, to show mercy, mercy, to show God's kindness. Mercy, we think of mercy as giving someone forgiveness. Okay, and that is indeed included in this, but mercy really means showing the loving kindness of God. And so uh, we need to be able to put ourselves in the place of others and show mercy. And, uh, and so this is just a very, uh, not meant to be in depth as to what um, these, each of these gifts are and everything. Um, in other places, 
Paul gives other gifts. And in uh, 1 Corinthians, he gives another, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, he gives a, a more exhaustive uh, description of the gifts. And then, then in, ver in chapter 13, he breaks off and he says, but if I have all the special gifts, in effect, he's saying this, and he's saying, if I have the gift of, of tongues, and I can speak with the tongues of angels, of men and angels, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. And so all these gifts that God gives us, and he does give us gifts, and he does give us the ability to serve him, and he calls us to serve him by serving those in his body. And so what I want to do is just emphasize that fact that that's what it's all about. It's about service. And and this is how I know I have these gifts by making myself available to do what God has called upon me to do. And sometimes it's it's uh, you get the call because someone comes up to you and says, "Will you teach a Sunday school class?" And uh, I've, I've seen this over and over again where people say, no, 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 you, you got to be kidding, not me. Well, will you at least come in and assist? Well, all right, I can assist, but I can't teach. And you find out that after uh, that person has given themselves over and to, uh, to do that ministry, you find that they become one of the most gifted teachers you've ever seen because they've given themselves over to God and they allow God to give them that gift. You know, we, all, we talk in terms of, once again, that, that survey thing I told you about uh, talks about uh, discovering your gifts. And I don't think it's necessarily discovering, it's receiving those gifts that God has for you to have and to use. And it comes by being available to him. Oh, what glory there is to be able to serve and, and what joy there is to be able to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember uh, a number of years ago uh, when it was uh, uh, actually three of us were, were, were praying together. Uh, Pastor Todd Luce over at Mitchell Hollow and uh, John uh, Osborne and me. And we were praying and praying uh, with the idea that uh, God was was um, uh, calling us uh, to start a church in the Hunter Tannersville uh, Valley in, in our in this area, and uh, um, and uh, not to take the place of any other church, but to be a uh, to provide uh, something that was not there at the time, and. Uh, and so we were praying together, and and we we started to thinking about well who will be pastor of that church, and uh, um, and I had had you know some I have had seminary training, uh, never thought of myself as a pastor but more as a support person in a in a Christian ministry. And uh, more in particular, most of it was Christian Day School administration. And so, uh, you know, it was, the others were starting to, you know, ask, would I consider? And so I went to the Lord and I did my Moses imitation and said to the Lord, well, Lord, I'm a steamer. I can't do that. And then I did my Timothy imitation and I had stomach issues. And, and so forth, which God has, oh, I'll tell you, I can't tell you, the stammering is still there, but I can get a message out, hopefully. But the uh, uh, the stomach thing, and God in recent years has really turned that around completely, and I just thank him for that. But the point is, is I'm, I'm saying also, Lord, I don't have those gifts. I'm not, I'm not gifted to be a pastor. I'm not gifted to be and, and you know my, my all my faults and everything like that. And I had all the reasons why I could not do this. And yet in the quietness in my heart, I felt God telling me, look, Dan, it's not my church. It's not your church, Dan. It's mine. And I can give it to you. And I can give you what you need. 
And I, and I said yes. And I'll tell you, to this day, if someone tried to take this position away from me, I'd fight tooth and nail. Why? Because of the joys that God has given me through it. And God will give you joy as you submit and you commit to him and allow him to lead you in the ways in the, of service that he has for you. And you can't believe what gifts you will, I will, you know, as the world says, you discover, but what gifts you will discover that God has and will give you. He has and will give you. Some of them you already have, and you just don't realize it. And others he will give to you as you need them. We thank you and praise you, Lord, and we just thank you for this time together. And I, I pray that uh, uh, you will just uh, work in each and every one of us to take this to heart, to realize that you have something for us each to do uh, for the body of Christ. And I pray that we will all resolve that we will not be missing in action and that we will be there and ready to do what you call us to do. And that we will be as Isaiah. Here I am, Lord, send me. We just thank you and praise you for your word today. In Jesus' name. We have a last hymn, and that is Trust and Obey. And if you have your song sheet, uh, song sheet, um, we will uh, sing that. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Nor a grief, nor a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed and <coughs> obey. And obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. To the favor he shows, these doors are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. And Lord, we do pray that you'll put in our hearts that gift of trusting and obeying you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I like that message about spiritual gifts. It's... Um, good God who gives us great gifts and is so benevolent to us and um, provides us all that we need and then blesses us with even more. Um, thank you for being with us today again and we will have a Zoom um, hangout time I guess uh, in about 15 minutes or so. Church went over a little bit I, I see today. That's okay. We had a few more songs and stuff too. 
And we, if you would like to join our chat group and are not already connected, please uh, message me um, on Facebook Messenger and we'll get you connected. We just kind of hang out for maybe 15, 20 minutes and just kind of visit with each other because we miss each other. <laughs> um, we will keep you informed this week as to what we are doing um, for next week. At this point, it looks like we're going to be going over to the church, getting things ready, making a few adjustments in our seating, and um, you will need to have a mask if you want to join us at the church. Um, and it's a limit to how many we can take in our in our building, which would be at 10, right? Yeah, 10 at this point. 10. Um, as far as a mask is concerned, if you don't have one, we, we can uh, try to provide have some available. Yeah, we'll have some masks and, of course, all the hand gel and soap that you could want. And, um, and we'll just worship. We'll be there, and whoever wants to join can join. But wait for an official word from us, just in case there's any other changes this week or hitches. But just plan. just uh, keep in mind that uh, if you can't be there, we are going to continue. And, and really, I'd like to do this as long as uh, uh, humanly possible. There's no reason why uh, I would see that it would stop. And so uh, from here for until the Lord comes, we hope and pray that we can continue to uh, do these, uh, um, putting it on YouTube. And uh, as long as the, the the quote gods of YouTube allow us to do it. <laughs> um, little G, not capital G of God. But uh, anyway, um, the authorities uh, there, and as long as they allow us to do it, we intend to do it. And uh, to have that out, uh, uh, and uh, that is just a joy and a wonderful thing, opportunity, and uh, um, and it's very cost effective. And, um, a way of, of getting out the message of, of Jesus Christ. And uh, anyway, and that is that. Is that. Uh, is that. Have a wonderful weekend. The weather is beautiful here. Um, and we do, um, of course, take, take a little time to honor, well, take time to honor our, our veterans that have given their lives on this Memorial Day. And I uh, hope you'll be blessed. And we will see you soon. And also, also keep in mind too. Um, you know, I'm telling people who are who, have, who are seeing this, but just remind others uh, who may have missed it. They can always tune in, um, and, and at any time, and watch it on YouTube. Um, the, uh, uh, the the neat thing about that is once we we air this, once we do this, it's automatically recorded. We don't have to even do anything special. To record it it's already there on YouTube and you can always see all the past uh, times together that we've had so uh, that's a it's a great thing mm -hmm. have a great day